All right, guys. Next little installment of the Industrial Revolution podcast here. Um, Adam Smith, um, an economist, um, comes up as the result of industrialization. Adam Smith, um, as the economic forces are turning during the industrial area, people began to reject the ideas of mercantilism, which you may remember is making money for the mother country. Everything goes to the mother country. Transatlantic trade fueled that. But, like Spain with the House of Trade, with the Casa de Contracion, it required a bunch of governmental regulation to make sure things were operating smoothly. But a new term is coined laissez-faire. Laissez-faire is an economic environment in which businesses are allowed to operate free from governmental control, free from governmental interference. And in 1776, Adam Smith writes The Wealth of Nations, in which he wanted a free market economy. In this economy, there will be natural forces that are going to come together. And those are the forces of supply and demand which are intertwined. And therefore, it is business and consumers that will regulate on how businesses operate. According to Adam Smith, when people, those are consumers, demand goods and services, businesses will seek to meet them. So right now, flying off the shelves are Carolina Championship t-shirts, right? So stores are printing and buying Carolina, you know, the, the ceiling is the roof championship shirts as fast as they can. Because the game was just Monday night. And when we sell that t-shirt at a price where consumers want it, that's the sweet spot. Supply meets demand. If we wait two or three weeks, that same shirt will be selling for you know, 25 or 50 percent less, but right now it's hot. Businesses will find a way to meet that demand. And it's competition. For Ford, there's GM. For Toyota, there is Honda. For Papa John's, there's Domino's. For Burger King, there's McDonald's. When people compete for your business, prices are cheaper and everybody wins. It's beneficial. The businesses make enough money for profit, they pay their employees, and the consumer is happy. And so it's during the Industrial Revolution through the 1900s that Adam Smith's ideas gain a lot of support. Businesses were heavily influenced by laissez-faire. Adam Smith is one idea. And uh, I could have kept going, but I um, got, went a little bit too far. Um, next up is Karl Marx, and Karl Marx is the opposite. He is the Burger King to Adam Smith's McDonald's. Karl Marx is a German philosopher who wanted to combat the giant gulf that he said was created by capitalism. He said a laissez-faire market is always going to create poor people. So he believes in the idea of socialism. Right? Socialism is where everything is publicly owned, where everybody is paid according to their needs. And Adam Smith, Adam Smith, excuse me, Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels will write a book known as the Communist Manifesto. It's short, 23 pages where they say that each person is going to be paid according to their abilities and their needs. With Marxism, it's the people, the workers, who will control the means of production. So especially sixth period, you need to ask me what the means of production are um, tomorrow. 1848, Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels write the manifesto where they describe, describe what we know as communism. It is the extreme form of socialism, the practical application of socialism. And according to Karl Marx, the bourgeoisie, 
middle class business owners are locked in a battle with the proletariat. The business owners are locked in a constant struggle with their workers, like good versus evil, the common average everyday wage worker. The manifesto said it was the workers who are eventually going to win this struggle. When that is done, tired of oppression, tired of being left out in the cold, these people will set up a classless utopian society. In a communist group, in a communist society, everything is shared. People will be divvied out resources based on their abilities and their needs. The big question is, who decides what your ability is and what your need is? People would get what they needed based on their abilities. Marx hated capitalism. As he said, it would create poverty. He wanted all working people, all countries, to unite against the bourgeoisie, he said, that was exploiting them. Now, Marx's thoughts have little immediate um, effect. However, they would later influence the world, especially in the late 1800s. Near the end of the Romanov dynasty in Russia, socialism begins to catch on, and this fueled the Russian Revolution of 1917. Marx's theories were not scientifically based or proven. And many parts of Western Europe said, well, this is horrible. You may say it makes the rich richer and the poor poor, but a lot of people in Western Europe had an improved standard of living. They said, we're doing better than we ever have before. So in Western Europe, industrialization was seen as good, not evil. It was a benefit. It was not something to be frowned upon. And so we're next going to talk about proletarianization, all right? A valid point when the lower classes are being um, exploited. And so this is what Karl Marx says, the capitalism will destroy itself. The people are going to revolt and do what is needed for society. That is when things are going to work um, collectively. Everything is going to run smoothly. So tomorrow you're going to ask me about proletarianization, and we'll talk about how that works for the common individual. Quick bedtime story tonight, folks. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you tomorrow.